Alright, so Assalamualaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh And so let us begin with our third experiment Okay, which is potentiometer uh, And a good day to everyone Okay, so anyways um, So potentiometer So potentiometer is a device that is used In a lot of things, alright But now we are, we are going to learn the basics of it So now, um, how to set up the circuit As shown in our circuit diagram in figure 3.1 now, first, we begin with your accumulator. Accumulator is another name for power supply. Alright. So, make sure that you label positive and negative. Uh, not on the power supply. It's just on your circuit diagram. So, that you know that whenever you take a crocodile clip. Okay. You take a crocodile clip. Stop, stop, stop. So, um, <coughs> we are going. Trim up. So, we are going to connect. All of the wires, our connecting wires. How to how how to connect? All right. So first, we have to identify where do we start. So we start from our accumulator. That's the simplest point to start from. And from your accumulator, you you just follow the sign. So positive goes into your switch. So you take one connecting wire from the positive terminal into the switch, and then from the switch, you take another connecting wire to the potentiometer one end of the potentiometer. All right. And then from here, from here, so as you can see here, it becomes like a loop, almost like a loop. And then from your potentiometer, okay, it goes into your dry cell. Now, what you do is, for the moment, okay, for the moment, for the time being, ignore this junction, okay, ignore this junction for, 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 for a while. So, from the, from the point, okay, so take another connecting wire from point A, of your potentiometer into the positive terminal of your dry cell okay and then from here you take another connecting wire from the negative terminal of your dry cell alright and then you just straight away go into your galvanometer again ignore this junction for a while okay ignore this junction for a while now from here from your galvanometer you see this is a very weird wire here okay this is your jockey wire now what is a jockey jockey is just basically it's just a, it's just a, a metal, it's just a metal that is sticking out so that you can touch uh, at certain certain points on uh, on on your wire. So we just name it as jockey. Okay. So and then leave it there, and then everything is done. So you have already completed. Oh wait, hold on. We have not yet completed one loop. We forgot about the negative terminal. All right. So the negative terminal here. You take another connecting wire and you just put it into a into the an other side of your uh, of your other side of your potentiometer. Okay, so here you can see here there is a loop. Okay, there is one loop here that is being formed. So this one we say the circuit is complete. Okay, we say the circuit is complete. Now you want to make it parallel. So if you want to make it parallel, see where it see where it uh, see where it connects. Or see where the junction is, right? So the junction is where here at the positive terminal of your dry cell. So what you do, you take one connecting wire from the positive terminal and then you just loop it into your variable resistor. Okay, so variable resistor in this experiment is going to be two types. I'll show you. I'll show you. I'll I will show it to you later. All right. So uh, after taking a wire into the variable resistor, take another wire into your switch and then from your switch, you go into your, ah, here, where to go here? Do we go to the galvanometer or do we go to the dry cell? Both also can, okay? As long as you make it parallel, it does not matter, okay? So, uh, yeah, so this one is up to you. You can go to dry cell or you can go to galvanometer, okay? As long as you get one loop here, then it's fine, okay? So that is how you connect all the wires theoretically now oh, login. Okay, that was, so. all right so um, this is a type of your variable resistor this is one type of your variable resistor which we are using your breadboard this is your breadboard okay so uh, and as you can see here there are two jumper cables here all right jumper cables mean we are jumping from one lane to another lane all right so just using a normal wire that, that is all Alright, so the function is just to connect the circuit up here and the circuit below. Alright, now, uh, when you want to make it parallel, okay, how to make it parallel? So, to make it parallel is you would arrange it like this, so that all of the legs, as you can see here, all of the legs, they are all parallel to each other. And over here as well, they are all parallel to each other. Okay, 
So, we say that this connection is parallel to each other lah. Okay, now however you have to be careful in this connection, make sure that the wires are not touching. So, as you can see here, these are almost touching. Okay, so try to avoid that. And yeah. So, because if they touch, then it will become short circuit over there and then you won't get the correct uh, experimental results. So, now, <clears throat> how to how to adjust your variable resistor? So, as you can see here in your procedure, it says that you start with... Uh, you start with uh, for the value for 1 ohm and then you go to 2 and then 3 and then 4 and then 5 and so on and so forth. So how would you do to adjust that? So the first step in order to get 1 ohm, you just connect your wire, your, your, your other connecting wire. Alright. Like this. Now if you connect it like this, this will become only 1 ohm. Alright. Because no other current. Current will not flow, current would not flow down here because there is no, there is no connection towards our circuit okay there's no potential difference so there's no motive for the electron to move but if you want to make it 1 over 2 for example all right how would you do it you would connect it to two resistors like this in parallel okay so this one becomes 2 ohms lah all right so the the the, the current now moves from here to here and then it, it gets split okay it splits from here goes into here and then comes out here all right so that is how you adjust the value for resistance lah, until 6. So if you were to connect it like this and then the current would split 6 ways. Okay, the current would split 6 ways and then and then the current would join back together over here and then it will complete the circuit. Okay, so that is how you use the variable resistor for this type of variable resistor. Now we move to the second uh, type of uh, variable resistor. Okay, which is known as a resistance box. Okay, now maybe some of you might be asking right now, why don't we just use the normal variable resistor that we find in SPM school? The one that you can push like that, like that, like that one. Why don't use that one? Well, it's because that type of variable resistor, solenoid type of variable resistor, it's, it's quite hard for you to get an accurate reading. Okay, we want to get an accurate reading. So that is why you use these two types so that you can accurately change the value of the resistance to what we want. Alright, so now this one is known as a resistance box and as you can see here, this is the infinity point or infinity stone. If you cabut this one, habis, half of you die already. Now, so never cabut that one. So now, uh, just leave the infinity stone here because this connects the circuit up here and down here. Alright. So, how to use this type of resistance box? So, in order to use this resistance box, so, if all of them are all plugged in, okay, if all of the pins are plugged in, okay, the resistance is minimum. Okay, the resistance is zero. Alright, zero. Alright, so, um, let's say you want one ohm. Okay, let's say you want one ohm. Alright, so, what, what would you do? You would just take out the pin for 1 ohm so now your resistance is 1 ohm ok so you want to get 2 ohms so you take out the pin for 2 ohms how to make it 3 ohms so you take out 2 and 1 so it becomes 3 ohms get it so that is how you use this resistance box now uh, this resistance box has a total resistance of 110 so uh, it corresponds to the number of pins that you take out lah. alright so that is all for the variable resistors Alright, so this is in uh, in your lab later, how the arrangement will be like. It's an example, it's not exactly this is how you need to arrange it, no. Okay, it's up to your own creativity, you might be more creative than this. So, this is uh, my example lah. Alright, so again like I said, we start from the positive terminal, we go to the switch. Alright, and then from the switch, we go to one end of the potentiometer. Okay, and then from that one end of the potentiometer, you go into the positive terminal of the battery. Okay, the red one is the positive terminal. Now, regarding your battery, okay, regarding your battery and your battery holder, make sure, as you can see here, I'm not sure if you can see here, down here, right, there is actually a gap. Most of the time, the problem arises if your battery is like this. So, as you can see here, there is a gap in the battery. Alright, so, uh, so the best method is, or the best practice is for you to push the battery so that it connects its connecting wire, right? So then the battery is connected. Okay, so uh, after 
the positive terminal we go into the negative terminal so the negative terminal into the galvanometer now galvanometer it does not matter too much the positive negative because it's its main function is just to detect the direction of the movement of current and then uh, from here <coughs> we connect our jockey so this is your jockey this is a type of your jockey there might be uh, different types of jockeys and then from this jockey we just touch on the wires in order to get our circuit be completed now if the circuit is complete you can see that the galvanometer the galvanometer needle is shifting so if the galvanometer needle is shifting it means that your connection is correct all right and then in uh, and make sure another wire from the negative terminal into the other end of your potential meter okay so now how to make it parallel now to make it parallel like i have already shown you again we start from the positive terminal of the battery Okay, we connect it into a, a switch. Alright, so connected. Now, and then from the switch to the variable resistor, macam terbalik je. Yeah, it is terbalik. So, <laughs> never mind. If terbalik, no problem. Okay, we can just take it out. As simply, as simple as that. Alright, so from, from the switch, right, so this is how it is. And then... Now you can make it parallel however way you like. You can make it parallel with the battery or you can make it parallel with the galvanometer and the battery. Okay, it's up to you. So I would choose the battery because why not? Alright, so done with our loop. Alright, so now we begin with our experiment. Uh, so the first step of the experiment is to determine the value of L0. L0 is your original length where there is no influence of your resistor below here. Alright. So how do we do that? We just take out the pin that is connecting it, all right? And then we turn on the power supply. Okay. Okay, we turn on the power supply. Now make sure the power supply is about 2 or 3 volts, okay? Don't try to go more than that. And then now <clears throat> now we find the point where it is balanced. We find the point where it is balanced. Now as you can see here the galvanometer is okay if i if i put it over here the galvanometer points towards the negative 35 region if i put it over here it points towards the positive 35 region so i need to find a point where it is where it is zero where it is zero is it zero over here no is zero over here no is zero over here no it is zero over there Chuck! yay so once you already got this make sure that your jockey hand is very st uh, stable now, as you can see here, after I turn off that accumulator, the galvanometer needle has already shifted. Never mind, leave it there. Because this is due to the battery's current. The battery's current is making it moving like that. So now what you would do is you want to find your L0. Where should you measure? Should you measure from here to the positive terminal or from here to the negative terminal? Ha. Which one? Choose, choose. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. The answer should be from the jockey to the positive terminal because that is where your influence of your current is. Okay, so from your jockey position to the positive terminal of your uh, battery, that is where your L naught is. Okay. okay. All right. So for the next step, you need both switches S1 and S2 to be closed. All right. So S1 is closed. S2 is closed. Cool. And we need at least six different values for R. Alright. So now we're going to be starting with 1 over 6. We're going to be starting with 1 over 6 ohms. Okay. So as you can see, I have connected all 6 here. So now what we do is, we again find the balance point. Now, before we finding balance point, make sure your accumulator is on. Alright. Once it is on, and then we find the point where it is balanced. Wow. I got it right the first time. Yep. It's balanced over there. Okay, so again, turn it off and then we take the reading from here to the positive terminal. Okay, from the jockey to the positive terminal. That is your L1. And then we repeat the process again for 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 until we get a perfect table. Alright, so that is all for this experiment. After getting all the values, we plot a graph of L0 over L and 1 over R. Okay, and we should get the objective for today's experiment.